and uh, taking notes as to uh, what has been uh, spoken about. I do understand uh, that you are with, uh, uh, currently standing with uh, Geraldine Fraser Mulaketi at uh, the moment. I did see visuals uh, from there that she was uh, sort of directing the program there. But, but take us through really what are some of the issues that uh, were discussed on this uh, International Women's Day? Well, indeed, Flo, uh, we were part of this day, the important day where women in South Africa are kind of observing the International Women's Day. We know that uh, the day will be commemorated or observed or celebrated tomorrow, but South Africa, some women took a decision to start uh, celebrating or commemorating the International Women's Day, looking at challenges facing women, in particular on areas such as uh, being proactive and leadership. We heard from young people saying, saying that they really need guidance. And we heard from the guest speaker who spoke about the challenges facing women in Palestine, particularly in the Middle East in general. And of course, the former president of the Republic of South Africa, Thabo Mbeki, talking about a need for South Africans to always remember that uh, it is not yet Uhuru, particularly for people of Palestine, and the struggle continue, and South Africa must continue, and particularly the continent to support the people of Palestine. But on the same breath, we know that uh, around the world currently, countries are worried about the outbreak of the coronavirus. And we know that South Africa, uh, two days ago, we reported one case. And unfortunately, today, a few uh, minutes ago, the minister releasing a statement that uh, a second person has been uh, identified as having tested positive with the coronavirus. I am going to speak to Geraldine Fraser Muleket. We know she's a former minister of South Africa. She's currently uh, dealing with issues of uh, higher education right now in the Eastern Cape. But also she was part of the Development Bank of Africa. She is a leader in her own right. We'll talk about corona and then of course challenges facing women around the world. Uh, I know you had this program talking about the role of women and particularly what needs to be done to ensure that we continue the struggle. But uh, I think what is important also is to note that currently around the world, people are worried about the outbreak of the coronavirus. What's your reaction as a former leader in government, but also you are still a leader? You would recall, Sophie, that I was in the African Development Bank as special envoy in, on gender and vice president when there was the outbreak of Ebola in Liberia and Sierra Leone, uh, Guinea, uh, Conigri as well. And we took particular steps and measures in West Africa in particular, which required some behavioral change. And if you look at the protocol that we followed, it's very much the protocol that's required to be followed in the instance of COVID-19. Wash your hands, don't touch your face, don't touch your mouth, and, and just man maintain a distance, generally speaking. So that's what uh, we need to look at. I think we must also be careful that this pandemic is not driven too much by hysteria and perception. Because if you think about it, in 2017, in Africa and India, there were more than 500,000 deaths from malaria. So very clearly, we have a big challenge. We've got to handle it. We've got to deal with it in a, a responsible way. But it mustn't be perception driven. So let's take into account what are the simple measures we must take. And the measures are such that we'll also not get flus if we follow those measures. Uh, talking about ordinary people and us uh, on the continent in particular, what is it that we are supposed to do now to support governments as they come up with a program of action to try and ensure that uh, this problem doesn't spread across the continent? We know that the AU is doing a lot in Addis Ababa. We know that World Health Organization is doing a lot. But... What is our responsibility as citizens, and the media in particular? I think the media needs to put out responsible messages in order not to create panic, first and foremost. But secondly, you know, as I said, 
we've got to communicate. We've got to say, tell our families in our homes, wash your hands all the time. Don't touch your face. Don't touch your eyes, your mouth. And we should also encourage people to not shake hands at the moment. It was very difficult in West Africa when we had to do that, but we had the elbow shake. So I can even demonstrate it with, you know, you use your elbow. I know people are also clicking heels, but it's to encourage people to do things differently and be very conscious of their personal hygiene. We've always been told to buy our parents and elders, wash your hands before you eat, or wash your hands after you eat. When you come from outside, wash your hands. It's the same thing. And this must be done. So we've got to communicate. And we must send very simple messages and diagrams in different languages that people can get it everywhere on the continent. And the issue of stigma? We shouldn't stigmatize people who have it. As uh, one of the doctors said, it's like a terrible flu. So if you've contracted it, you've got to use a mask. So we're saying be cautious, but let's not uh, over-exaggerate this because it's going to create a problem. And I've seen memes going around on social media that's not helpful around this. We've got to encourage people to look at personal hygiene. And today, International Women's Day, women talking about their challenges. The story from uh, Palestine, quite disturbing, reducing many of us to tears. Yes, the Palestine story was a very big story and a number of lessons for us. One of the issues was very clearly where Dr. Jeber pointed out that the impact of uh, occupation, the impact of war, the impact of oppression on a people is more adverse on women than on men. And I think for us the lesson was that we need to disaggregate it. We've never looked at it. As we also listened to her, we could almost put ourselves there as South Africans. The fact that, you know, the whole issue of trauma, it, it is in your gene. You need to be able to deal with it. And she emphasized the need to tell the story of the oppression that you've been under, of the incredible subjugation, because she said silence creates a, a form of neurosis. And I've never thought about it like that, Sophie. And I think we need to go back and remember that there are stories we shouldn't be shy, we shouldn't shy away of, that we also need to look at collective healing. And I think it's important for South Africa that we shouldn't just look at therapies for individuals, but look at how communities can play that role and how women should play a role to take it forward. I mean, it's incredible, but solidarity is critical and we must never forget the Palestinian struggle. Your former colleague, uh, Dr. Pubzilem Lambongnuka, currently the director of we UN Women, has kind of tried to ensure that women participate on issues of peace and stability around the world. You are a former soldier. How are you coping with the trauma of, uh, you know, exile? Yes, people sometimes think uh, we have uh, met Geraldine Fraser Mulekit. It has been all rosy for her, you know, her rise you know, to power in terms of uh, responsibility in government and the uh, development of Bank of Africa, and now you are back in Eastern Cape assisting uh, education. And I'm, and I'm serving on boards of two listed companies at the moment. Yes. But tell us the experience and your advice to people. You know, my advice is that we do need to write our stories. Let me tell you honestly that at a personal level, it was only in 2009, after I stepped out of government, that I really sat down and even related my experiences to my children. And I've made a commitment that I will write about this because it's also important for the healing process. But you know, when I was in government, and also as Minister for Welfare and Population Development, we tried to look to a degree at this issue of trauma and the impact on society. We put some things in place, but we didn't go far enough. 
And I think we need to take this forward. You also know that there's organizations such as SAWID, South African Women in Dialogue, uh, a bit of a brainchild from, uh, by uh, Susanna Lembecki. Those sorts of initiatives need to be taken forward because there is a need for a safe space or rather we should make every space a safe space where we can write and talk about our past and we shouldn't allow others to write that history. We've seen recent attempts in our country where people try to deny our past and present it differently. FW Titlak specifically him amongst others and I think that's unacceptable because I know for example I worked very closely with Joe Tabi he was assassinated in Arari shot 22 times by a special unit that was under instruction from the highest level at that point in time that's a story to be told his widow stays in Protea North Martabi and I think we need to tell those stories because just as I may carry a part of it, just imagine his immediate family. So we won't let others write history. We will rewrite history and ensure that it's written through a woman's lens as well. Thank you so much. That was uh, Mayor Geraldine Fraser Mleketi. You know her very well, a former Minister of Social Development, also a former Minister of Public Service and Administration. You'd recall that big or huge civil service strike where she was thrown in a deep end as a young leader on, in South Africa, but she was able to navigate all those challenges. And finally, going to the Development Bank of Africa, also leading there. And now she's back in the country, and perhaps we can learn a lot from her. Over to you, Flo. All right, thank you very much, uh, Sophie Mukwena, there uh, chatting to us uh, from uh, Turfentain with the uh, Tawan Becky Foundation and the University of South Africa, UNISA, are, of course, hosting uh, that International Women's Day event, which as we can see is uh, wrapping up at uh, the moment there. And quite appropriately, they're starting the conversation with Geraldine fraser Mulaketi about uh, the coronavirus. Of course, uh, she would have uh, some kind of memory as to how other uh, diseases or viruses were sorted out in the past when, of course, she was a minister here uh, in the country. More on this uh, after the break.